episode two, two of the four year. Thanks for watching. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback last week, um, but we're back. And we're back. here's episode two. And me and Dave were thinking, what can we share? And we wanted to uh, continue to get followers and kind of build some hype on this whole four year thing. And uh, and so we didn't want to go dive too heavy into some stuff. So I don't like heavy. Uh, yeah, eventually. Uh, but we wanted to kind of welcome you guys into what we do, the foyer. Welcome yeah, you in. Welcome. Um, and so we thought it would be awesome to share what it's like to share an office together. Kind of like office etiquette. Office etiquette. Sharing an office etiquette. And I don't know, maybe maybe you have your own office. God bless you and lucky you. Maybe you share an office. Maybe you have a little cubicle. Dave used to have his own office. I did. You know, and it, it was a glorious thing. And, uh, and it wasn't so much like a demotion where I had to share an office because Nolan... You didn't have an office for a while. Yeah, when I you came, used, When you came right on staff, you were like a floater. <laughs> I literally officed. Um, office? Yeah, office. Is that a verb? Yeah. Can you office somewhere? Right. That's, verbs are what you do. Work. It's officed. Yeah, I officed. Google that. I set up a like an eight-foot white table and like a metal chair. In one of like the kids' rooms. In a kid's room. No privacy whatsoever. And man, what? And you, so instead, I said, Dave, let's office together, so you have no privacy. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you take you take our personalities. All right, mine's, you know, I'm kind of the quiet introvert. You know, yeah, me too. No. <laughs> and Nolan is the opposite <laughs> of. I mean, he's the extrovert upon extrovert. Extrovert. Yeah. And so we shared an office, and so it's like what fifteen by. Yeah. I don't know, eight. Yeah, we we're trying to figure out how big our office was before we filmed this. And you know, it's, we knew, I knew it was bigger than two feet because I said like I could dunk. And so it was several feet it, over the rim. And the, so like you can dunk I, on the little basketball goal. About twelve. We we split the difference, so it was about twelve feet. Yeah, twelve feet by like ten feet. And here's the thing: like when you, of course, we we haven't known each other that long, and so when you get to know each other and you start to share an office, you're almost forced to kind of obviously get to know each other. And so there were things where, you know. For for instance, talk about office etiquette. You know, we have two different ways of leaving the office. Mm. You know, Nolan is he has to say mm. bye to everybody in the whole building. He has to go hug the kids in childcare, whether they're there or not. Yep. He has to high five everybody, give them a hug, say see you, love you, <laughs> and then and then there's me. <clears throat> what? Well, yeah. So <laughs> quite the opposite. Oh, and this is I don't think this is a bad thing. But it's just awkward. It's, it's not. It's, it gets it's only weird. awkward. It's, it's weird. weird. It's not. It's it weird if you make it weird. Here's what's weird. I don't Dave, think it's weird. Dave doesn't know this because he's gone at this point. They probably talk about this happens. I leave. And people will walk into my office and say, "Hey, where's Dave?" And I'll say, "I don't know. He, you know, he walked out a few minutes ago. Um, could be at the copier, grabbing stuff off the copier, cleaning the workroom. I don't know. In the having a movement in the bathroom. <laughs> no, should we be? No." <laughs> Having a movement, having, a, having some just quiet time. Yeah, it's reading, his bi reading, his Bible. Bible. reading his Bible in the bathroom. Uh, um, in that visual. <laughs> and no, that's not where he's at. He went home. He's gone. He is done for the day. But little do people know that every day I have to experience this, where Dave gets up and leaves like he's going to get something off of the copier, <laughs> like he's going to go talk to Phil. He's heading to a meeting. Like his laptop is still on his desk, open. His chairs rolled out. His backpack that he apparently uses. I didn't need to take it off. His backpack is sitting under his desk. It's like he is not leaving. Like this is a this is a place. His office is still. Like he's, in, he's probably in, coming in, back in working condition. You would you would look at my desk like he's probably coming back. And so Dave will just hop up and like walk out of the room, and then all of a sudden I'll look at my watch, and it'll be like twenty minutes, 30, an hour later. I'm like, where's Dave? I'll shoot him a text. Oh, sorry, dude, I went home. Yeah, so I don't say bye when I leave. Not it's just it, like maybe one out of fourteen days. Do you like? I mean, tell I me don't. Bye. I and don't, the only reason you tell me bye is because is because you'll be walking out and I say, "Where are you going, Dave?" And you're like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna go get the kids. I'm heading home." Yeah, and so that's the only, only time that you'll know. Tell me why if there's something going on. But I don't think anything's wrong with that. I don't like goodbyes. No, it's Assume not. Me. I don't it, like goodbyes. It's just different. It's just you know, different. You're gonna see me tomorrow. You know, I trust you so much that I can leave my laptop open. 
my life is an is an open book. I don't hide yeah. anything, which is a good thing. Babe. And so we we have two two totally different, you know, personalities. Two totally different way of, I guess, leaving the office. Two, yeah. But we do share an office. I don't even know if that's a con. It's not necessarily. But con. there's more of a pro because we share an office. We spend a lot of time together. We get to just bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah. One of the coolest things that I've ever been able to be a part of is sitting in a think tank and dreaming up sermons, yeah. dreaming up series, uh, sitting down and talking with a student that you know is. That, that needs to sit down and have a talking with, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but back to that whole, the wall that I was talking about and it's making our office of think tank, our wall is an entire dry race course. It is. And we, and we throw sermon ideas up there and it's quotes. But mainly Michael Scott, probably for me. But yeah. Or great theologians for me. Yeah. Like, uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, we sit there, and so if we think of something, or a sermon idea, or, I don't know, just something that, hey, for this would make a good message, this would yeah. be a good talk, this would be a good sermon series, yeah. this would be a good camp name, yep. curriculum name, whatever, we'll just jot it down. And it yep. may stay on the board or the wall for a month. A month. And it could be one of those things, where like, oh, a lot of times for me, I write out my sermon on our wall. Yeah. And so I can add things, take away things, erase things, and so, and no one does that same thing, and so for me... I'm able to kind of flesh it all out and say, hey, what do, what do you think? think? And most of the time, he's like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And no one gets saved. And it's a great, every, every week. I ask you this it's, into my heart every at week. least twice a week. And it's, it's Because it's, I come in you know, and Dave has this, this sermon up there. And I'm like, that's a good one. To God, that's good. Glory. But right. sometimes you're like, hey, I'm struggling. Yeah. You know, which is the other benefit of sharing an office and being able to have a wall where you can write things on. Uh I remember the uh, a sermon that Dave shared um, on a weekend. It wasn't for the student ministry, uh, but it was on the weekend, so he, he got to share it four times. Um, and uh, it was about the woman at the well. Um, and if you are here for this, um, honestly, seriously, at the end of the day, it was one of the greatest illustrations I've ever seen. Someone deliver and the illustration in, in in and of itself. But if you were one of the few chosen few that were at the last <laughs> service, the last you got a different experience. I just let Dave share the Yeah, story. so we, again, I was like, hey, I need an illustration in this thing out, doing the one with the well, this deal. And it was all about leaving your your sin, your past, you know, with the, with the you know, the, the whole story is like, Jesus is like, you know, go and sin no more. You're done. Okay. And so I wanted an idea where we just leave our past in the past and we can move forward. And so I was like, no, and he said, what if, what if you could make water disappear? And I was like, let's get done. And so he gets online, I'm getting online trying to figure it out. And so we find this, I don't know, like scientific experience, you know, experiment, power yeah, stuff. Yeah. I get it on Amazon, bring it in. And so we tested it. It worked. And so I put, it's this substance. You put it in, we, I put it in like this big jar, uh, put it in there, you put a little water and it just dries it all up. And so it just kind of disappears. And you, and, and you, you, you tipped it upside down. Yeah. And so my whole thing is like she would continuously go back to the well because she was searching for so many things, whether it be husbands or whatever it may be. And so her, she was always left empty. And Jesus was the only water, obviously, you kind of know the story, that could truly satisfy her soul. And so I took that and ran with it. And and so I had this whole thing, ending this, ending the, my message. All, I mean, I got hundreds of people. And here's the thing. We have four services. They're all identical. And so I preached it four times. So the last service of the weekend, and it had gone flawlessly. I tipped it over, wow. you know, poured the water in the in the People were crying. Did the whole thing, tip it over. The water's gone. And everybody's like, oh, my God. And so the last service, for whatever reason, <laughs> it didn't work. And so I don't know what happened, but I did the whole thing. Was like oh, you know man. setting it up. I mean, it was an alley oop, and I did the thing. And, and then when I got to the whole like turning it over, obviously for three times when I turned it over, nothing would come out. And when I turned it over that fourth service, like snow came out. And that was just, I remember sweating, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? But you're quick on your feet. Yeah, it's a gift. And so <laughs> what what I did is, like, I noticed that the, this big clump of snow or whatever it was, white powder came out. And so I said, he makes our, you know, 
our lives white as snow. And I was like, and so I said something like that, knowing that everybody in the crowd realized exactly what had happened. That this whole sermon illustration had just gone downhill really quickly, and I did my best to, to save it. But 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 hey, three out of four, and it was it's pretty good. And it seriously was my favorite illustration I've ever seen you do. Yeah, and so that's that's kind of like what we love doing because because here's the thing you gotta understand is like you you as far as in ministry, everybody always thinks that that they're the best communicator, they're the best uh, email writer, they're the best you know at everything that they do, especially when you're with. You know, as us millennials, young people, you get in ministry, and it took for me a while to figure out that you are better when other people are around you that can critique you. That's what I love about in our lead pastor. There's not many lead pastors that goes around and asks other staff members to hear his sermon on Saturday night, which is our first service, and he says, "Hey, critique me. What happened? What was good? What was bad?" And so we take that kind of culture and you know implement it just in our office. So I say. You know, what do you think about that passage? Or what do you think the breakdown? What do you think about this illustration? Mm. Do you think it's going to work? And there's been times where no one's like, hey, I think you need to tweak this. Or, yeah. or hey, what do you think about this? Or, hey, I did this illustration three years ago and it worked. This worked perfect. And so, you know, I've understood that people make you better. And, and here's the thing. Like, you surround yourself that with people that, that love you. I feel like you love me. I, and, you I know, love yes. you as a human being. Yes. I love your family. And I... I just, I can't wait to go to work every day because I can turn off. And, and, and I love this guy. And so, like, and that's why I trust him. Because if I didn't know the guy, he's saying, you know, your sermon, I would change everything. I'd be like, what? Who are you? But with you, if you said that, like, okay, who are you? You know, I would say that. But, you know, I, it would make me think. And so I think it's just beneficial to surround yourself with people that you trust, you know, from a, you know, obviously a friendship. Obviously, we, uh, we have a common ground as far as theologically what we believe, yeah. and so it makes us kind of writing sermons and sermon planning and sermon series and even illustrations work so much better because we're on the same page. That's right. So, what about you? I mean, you got anything? No, I, like I said, I think, dude, I, he, this dude amazing. I, I, I could sit here and listen to you all day. Thank you. So, well, um, you do most, but instead, I think we should close this thing up and we should go back to our office and be office buddies. Yeah, and get something out of that mini fridge that we have in our office. Oh, we get, well, here's the thing: we have a couch, a couch we have, which we got, and now we have a mini fridge. A mini fridge. So we bought one for camp, and nobody else needed one, so we just like we'll take it. <laughs> and so we've got, you know, we have a, we, we have, have our own refrigerator. And so the only the only thing we're missing in our office is like a TV in a bathroom. If we had a TV in a bathroom, I would never go home. I would never leave. I would stay there. <laughs> Awkward forever. goodbyes would be over. No. I would never have to say goodbye. I know. Yeah. You know? And so that would be that's all we need. Hey. Let's put that in next year's budget. Let's do that. Youth youth budget 2018. 2018. We need bathroom a TV in and David we'll, we'll get on that. So yeah. hey, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week. California.